Have you been hungering for the supernatural in your life? Did you know that the Bible says that signs are to follow you and you not follow signs? Tune into today's broadcast. We're going to talk about how to live a supernatural life. Welcome to Wisdom for Living with Greg Moore. Join with Greg as he shares truth from the Word of God that will help you grow in wisdom and successfully navigate a balanced life with family, marriage, finances, and relationships. And now, here's Greg. Welcome to today's broadcast of Wisdom for Living. My name is Greg Moore. This is the beginning of a new week, and we're starting a brand new series called Living a Supernatural Life. And did you know that you weren't called to just be normal, to just live a mundane, uh, boring Christian life? Man, God has supernatural things for you. You, he, he wants to add super to your natural. Thank you, Jesus. And we're gonna we're gonna talk about that from uh, every conceivable side of of uh, of, of things. And actually, it's it's a uh, um, part of my uh, teaching. It comes from my book called "Flowing in the Supernatural." And man, uh, I encourage you to go on gregmore.com and pick up a copy of, of, of this book. But we're, we're going to be talking about how you, how you can live a supernatural life, how you can, you can live and walk and experience the things that Jesus experienced when he walked the earth, where you read the book of Acts. You can actually be a part of completing the book of Acts. Do you, do you realize that the book of Acts in the New Testament is one of the only books that doesn't have an amen on the end of it. What does that mean? The chapters in the book of Acts are still being written. And man, there are things that you and I are going to do supernaturally. You and I uh, are, are ordained to make a difference in this world. And we are in uh, troubling times in the natural. The world is going crazy. But praise God, you, you and I, the church, ha, we have the opportunity to turn things right side up. And it's not going to happen with just boring uh, liturgy that doesn't uh, impact people's lives. It doesn't bring transformation. Uh, we, we need a supernatural church. And Jesus birthed a supernatural church. The church was birthed in the supernatural. On the day of Pentecost, they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And then Peter, who was a coward, went out and preached, and 3,000 people were born again. Man, I'm telling you, we're going to have days like that again, where there's signs, wonders, and miracles, multitudes of people coming into the kingdom, but it's going to take an army, it's going to take the body of Christ, it's going to take you, it's going to take me, yielding to the supernatural power of God. And we're going to talk about how to draw out the supernatural, how to walk in the supernatural, how to live a supernatural life in a crazy world that's going to draw people to the Lord. Did you know that healing is the dinner bell that God uses to draw people to himself. It's the dinner bell. It's, it's uh, Jesus went, went about uh, doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, Acts 10, 38. He went, he, he, Jesus healed all, and, and he's the same. Hebrews 13, verse 8 says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever, he's the same. To, he's the same Jesus today as he was when he walked the earth. The difference is now uh, we can do more works. We can do even greater works because we have the same Holy Spirit on the inside of us. And if you're born again, you have the power to do that. So we're going to get into this. And man, I know it's going to be a blessing uh, to you. So I, I encourage you to uh, let someone know 
a friend, a relative, family member, somebody that you love that that uh, you, actually you've been trying to encourage uh, to uh, to move in the things of, of the spirit, to move in the supernatural. Encourage you to let them know about our broadcast of Wisdom for Living in this series, Living a Supernatural Life. Well, I'm going to tell you a funny today. This is called the Stock Market Report. New, the Stock Market Report for today, helium was up. Feathers were down. Paper was stationary. Fluorescent tubing was dimmed in light trading. <laughs> Knives were up sharply. Pencils lost a few points. Hiking equipment was trailing. <laughs> Elevators rose while escalators continued their slow decline. Weights were up in heavy trading. <laughs> Mining equipment hit rock bottom. <laughs> Diapers remained unchanged. <laughs> the, market, <laughs> the market for raisins dried up. Balloon prices were inflated, and toilet paper touched a new bottom. <laughs> that is funny. That is funny. I don't care who you are right there. That's funny. So we're called, you and I are called to live a supernatural life. John fourteen twelve, Jesus said, He that believes on me, the works that I do, you know, he shall do also, and even greater works shall he do. Here's my question, my brother and sister, are, do you believe on Jesus? Now, you can't, you have to take Jesus uh, as he is. You can't just, you can't, you can't compartmentalize Jesus. You can't Burger King Jesus. You know, I'll take, uh, I'll take uh, Jesus my way. No, it, it, it can't be Jesus according to your denomination or Jesus according to your understanding. You have to take Jesus as he is. And Jesus is a healer. In fact, one of his names, Jehovah Rapha, the Lord is our healer. And he's still healing people today. If you believe in Jesus, then you're going to be doing the same works that he did. And Jesus preached and he taught and he healed. And my question is, my brother and sister, what are you doing? And I'm not, there's no condemnation, but it starts by believing. Do you believe on Jesus? If you believe on Jesus, you're going to be doing the works that Jesus did. And Isaiah 8.18 says, I, and the King James Version says, I and the children whom the Lord has given me are for signs and wonders. And then if you read Mark 16 and verse 17, and these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. Listen, guys, understand this. Signs are to be following us. We're not, we're not supposed to be following signs. Now, it's not wrong to go to a meeting where there's uh, signs and wonders there. It's certainly you know, appropriate to do that, but we don't need to be groupies you know, following a healing evangelist around, hoping that we can get mercy drops to follow, fall on us. We, we, we need to understand that signs, God's called signs to follow you and me. He, he's called signs, uh, healing, wholeness, uh, deliverance, freedom, you know, to follow you and me. We're not to be following the signs. Signs are following us. We, we're to be living a supernatural life just like Jesus lived. And we have the same power on the inside of us that Jesus, that Jesus had. And it's, it, it's powerful to, under, man, to understand this truth is, is, just, it, is, is just amazing. Now, I didn't, I didn't always know and understand the power of God. Uh, I didn't know the su supernatural like I do today. There was a time that uh, 
you know, I, I just, I didn't know God like I know him today. And I didn't know that he would do the same works that he did today. My parents were divorced when I was eight years old. And a few times we would go to a, a denomination. My mother took us to a denominational church, a Lutheran church. And I'm not against any of these denominations. So, you know, if you are a Lutheran, praise God. I'm not upset at you or anything, but in the Lutheran church that I went to in the Midwest of the United States, uh, I didn't, I never heard the gospel in, in, in my uh, Lutheran church. We, we never heard the gospel. I never, I mean, we, we had Sunday school classes and, and things like that, but I never, I never heard the gospel, never penetrated. Uh, Maybe they taught it and preached it when uh, when I wasn't there, okay, because I didn't attend that much, but I, I never heard the gospel. Then then later, uh, we went when we moved to Texas, we went to a Baptist church, and they taught us that uh, they taught us that miracles and signs and wonders had passed away for the most part. And if you if you, you know, God might heal, but what you have to do is pray, if it be thy will. Well, you know, my uh, nephew, Ryan, was born to my, my brother, and uh, he had problems, water on the brain, and we prayed, Lord, if it be thy will. And Ryan went to heaven, uh, praying, if it be thy will, prayers. Uh, if it be thy will, prayers are not appropriate when the will of God is is known, and then so I did. I just didn't know. I, you know, we, I, I never. I didn't know that God was a supernatural God. I, but then I started reading the Bible, and reading the Gospels, and then I and I would read uh, in the Book of Acts, and I'd see miracles, and I'd see healings, and I'd see people delivered, and. And I'd see the gifts of the Spirit. I didn't know what those were, but things where people were operating in a supernatural way, uh, beyond our natural ability. And man, I, it was like, uh, I, and then I looked at our church that we were attending, and I wasn't seeing any of that. Uh, we would see some people saved in the Baptist church, and certainly that is a supernatural thing uh, when people are born again. But then when I started dating my wife and she attended a Methodist church, we started attending the Methodist church. And after I was married, you know, we were attending the Methodist church. And, and, and again, I'm not against Baptist or Lutheran or Methodist, so please don't, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not offended at any, anybody or mad at, at anybody. And your Baptist or Methodist or Lutheran church may be preaching the gospel. And they may be seeing signs and wonders, but I didn't. In fact, our preacher, uh, our pastor, uh, was many times he preached from the Reader's Digest. You know, and it's like uh, very little was taught from the Word of God. And um, so I, but I'd, so I'd read the Bible, I'd look at the Gospels, and then look at uh, l- and look at my church. And it was like they they weren't they didn't even resemble one another, and I I just began to pray God, you know I I want to see the Book of Acts operate again. This is you know is this why is this here? Did this really pass away, like like I'd heard uh, in in the Baptist Church the, these things passed away and and that you know if you if anybody ever spoke with tongues that was of the devil and you know but uh man before i was born again uh i i hang i hung around people who were you know not serving god and i never heard any of them <laughs> speak in tongues you know and and uh, that and I, and then i got filled with the spirit later and man people told me well you got to watch that you know praying in other tongues and and praying in this supernatural language because that could be that could be the devil well how could the devil help you live a better life you know and so i was just hungry and i began to cry out 
to God. Uh, are you are you hungry, my brother and sister? Are you thirsty for more of God? Do you want to live a supernatural life? God said, those that hunger and thirst after me will be filled. You're not going to be denied. And so we began to seek the Lord. You know, I, uh, a few times, a couple of times, I went to a uh, a Pentecostal church. And again, I'm not against any of these denominations, okay? But uh, that it was it was like the preachers were, uh, in fact, if one, one service I was in, they had several preachers in a row and they were trying to out-preach one another. It was a, it was a preaching competition. And when they'd say God, they'd say God, duh. God, duh. you know, and, and then the, it, it was like if, if you could be more exuberant and, and I thought, well, that's not what I see in the, in the book of Acts and in the gospels. And so, you know, but then I started really getting hungry and, Man, I, and I, I found this program in this ministry called the 700 Club by just watching television and turning the channels. And I saw this uh, program, and, and, some, and, and someone's in the same place today as I was. You've been crying out for the truth. You've been crying out for reality. And you've tuned in today by accident. <laughs> but it's not by accident. It's on purpose. God's got a purpose for you. He's got a plan for you. He's got a supernatural life for you. And so I began to watch uh, Pat Robertson and Ben Kinchlow uh, share on the 700 Club. And I was just riveted to them because I could, I could see the love of Jesus in their eyes, and they begin to teach from the Word of God and then they begin to operate in the gifts of the Spirit. Uh, I didn't know what a word of knowledge was or a word of wisdom. We're going to talk about that in this series. You're going you're to find out what the gifts of the Spirit are and how they operate so that, and, and, and how you can operate in them. But I, I would watch, and they, and they would actually, uh, like Jesus had this word of knowledge with the woman at the well, and ask her, where is your husband? And she said, well, I don't have one. And he said, you rightly have said you, you, you don't have one. You're, you've had five husbands, and the one you have right now you've not, uh, you're, is not your husband. You're just living together with, with him. Well, he wasn't condemning her, but he, how did he know that about her? It was through a word of knowledge. The, the Holy Spirit gave him the word of knowledge because he was filled with the Spirit. And I watched these men operate in, in these gifts. And I said, and I and then I said, for the first time, here's somebody that's operating in, in the things that I see in the New Testament. And so I was just drawn to that. And then then I would watch Oral Roberts and Catherine Kuhlman. And I thought she was a little bit weird. But man, there were real bona fide miracles that were happening. And I was just riveted to that. It was like, man, this is Jesus in, in the Bible is, is manifesting himself today. And through these, through these ministries, and I, and, I, and I asked the question, and I asked, asked the Lord, I said, is this just some special thing that you do for these people? Or is this something that everyone can operate in? And... I didn't know the answer to that until later when I, when I uh, looked at a verse like uh, what I shared with you earlier, John 14, 12, he that believes on me, and I certainly believed on him, the works that I do, he'll do also. And I had to just say, yeah, Lord, that's me. I, I want to do this, and I do believe in you. And it's not just for a uh, special evangelist or uh, certain ministers. This is for all the body of Christ, which we're going to share with you in more detail about in, an, in a subsequent broadcast that it, the, the gifts of the Spirit are for each one of us. You can operate in these things. And I, and I began to watch these men and, and, and these women operate in the gifts. I began to, uh, I began to see, in fact, you know, I, 
but I've been taught that women couldn't preach or teach. And, and yet here was Catherine Kuhlman ministering. And I didn't realize later that that was wrong teaching because what, and, and we're going to go into, a, in fact, an entire program we're going to deal with. Can women uh, speak and teach and minister and operate in the gifts in the church today? And, you know, I'm going to, I'll just tell you briefly right now, absolutely they can. And I know somebody's going to say, yeah, but Paul said that they're not supposed to be talking in church. Well, if you read the context, Paul in 1 Corinthians 14, Paul was setting things in order, and that was a point of order, and he was talking to wives. He wasn't speaking to all women because he said, he said, if you have a question, go ask your husband at home. What group of women have husbands? <laughs> wives. What he's specifically referring to there is he's saying, I don't allow a wife to use her platform of ministry to shame her husband or to, uh, or, or to try to straighten her husband out publicly or to usurp authority over her husband. Uh, in other words, he was placing a point of order that, that marriage was higher than their ministry. We're going to go into a lot of detail on a subsequent program about that, but I begin to see the supernatural operate. I begin to cry out to God, God, I want to oper- I want to see this operate, and I want to see this uh, operate in my life. And and uh, man, and then my wife, uh, I fell asleep on the floor. What we were watching the Seven Hundred Club. I fell asleep on the floor. I woke up, and my wife was on the phone talking to a 700 club counselor and she'd received the baptism in the holy spirit did you know that the baptism of the holy spirit is the doorway to the supernatural it's your it's your entry point into a supernatural life it doesn't mean you can't operate supernaturally at all if you've not been filled with the spirit but uh it, it does mean that, man, if you want to operate in, a, in abundance in, in on a regular basis and be more sensitive to the, to the Spirit, be led by the Spirit, and see signs and wonders, uh, you need to be filled with the Spirit. Jesus was filled with the Spirit. If he needed to be filled with the Spirit, you and I need to be filled with the Spirit. My wife was filled with the Spirit, and then she got up uh uh, the following Sunday morning, and she shared with the co- she asked the, if she could share a, her testimony in a 1,500 member Methodist church, and she said that that song we've been singing about praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, and and I didn't know who the Holy Ghost was, and I I used to sing it and think well praise Father, Son, and Holy who I didn't know the Holy Spirit. She said. He's really real. He's made a difference in my life. And, and man, God had radically changed her. She was just filled with joy where she was filled with worry before. And, man, she was uh, even more affectionate and passionate toward me. And I thought, man, this is awesome. And, and uh, she shared her testimony. Uh, and then the pastor told her to sit down. And then we got the left foot of fellowship out of the Methodist church. And that's really uh, hard to do <laughs> uh, because we, my wife got filled with the Spirit. Then she subsequently went to a, uh, an Assembly of God church where they were, they were uh, the gifts of the Spirit were in manifestation. And I, f- I followed her over there and, and I thought, man, this is really powerful. Somebody got up and spoke in a language like Swahili or something, I thought. And then somebody else here uh, like translated it, and I thought this was pretty cool. And then all the men after the service uh, got up and and uh, and they were talking about with they were talking about Jesus. All the men in the services in the churches that I went went to, they after the service they went out and lit up. And <laughs> and I'm not there's no condemnation if you're if you're smoking. You know smoking's not going to send you to hell. Uh, it might send you to heaven quicker, 
and uh, then you just stink while you're dying. But anyway, uh, man, we got both of us then. I, later, I was I filled with the Spirit, and we've been walking a supernatural life ever since. And I'm going to tell you, my brother and sister, God's got a supernatural life for you. You can live a supernatural life. And I want, I want to encourage you. Stay tuned to these next uh, few broadcasts because God's going to open up the supernatural for you in a very practical and real way. Thanks so much for tuning in to this, today's broadcast of Wisdom for Living. Greg's book, Flowing in the Supernatural, offers practical instruction and guidance for operating in the gifts of the Spirit according to their biblical order. In this book, you will discover how to recognize the gifts of the Spirit, exercise spiritual gifts in personal and corporate settings, and unlock the hidden power of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Order your copy from gregmore.com today. If you enjoyed today's broadcast, I want to encourage you to go online, gregmore.com, and pick up a copy of my book, Flowing in the Supernatural, where I go into much more detail that I can cover in these broadcasts. Uh, also, pick up a copy. If you pick up a copy of our product on this, uh, this series, uh, either DVDs, USB, uh, CD, I'm going to send you this book free. So go to gregmore.com or call the number on your screen. God bless you. Today's teaching, Living a Supernatural Life, is available in a 10-disc CD or DVD album or on a USB flash drive containing both audio and 4K video. Also today, when you order Living a Supernatural Life in either CD, DVD, or USB, Pastor Greg will give you a free copy of his book, Flowing in the Supernatural. In this book, you will discover how to recognize the gifts of the Spirit, exercise spiritual gifts in personal and corporate settings, and unlock the hidden power of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Go to gregmore.com and get your free copy today. If you've been blessed by today's teaching, we would like you to consider partnering with Greg Moore Ministries. Your partnership will help expand this broadcast around the world to give people the opportunity to grow in wisdom, Christ-likeness, and grace. Go to gregmore.com and become a partner today. Remember, you can order resources or partner with our ministry at gregmore.com or by writing to us at P.O. Box 7702, Woodland Park, Colorado, 80863. We look forward to hearing from you today. Join us again tomorrow for more Wisdom for Living. I had this amazing inheritance and I was reading the Bible and I didn't understand it. And I got, filled, I, I got filled with the Spirit, and all of a sudden, understanding started coming. Revelation started coming. The author of the Bible <laughs> started revealing these things to me because I was filled with the Spirit. That's tomorrow on Wisdom for Living.